Welcome back. So this is a continuation of part one. Uh, this will be part two for that Mooney M20 with the 180 horse Lycoming that uh, ran rough on startup and there was no exhaust gas temperature on number four cylinder. So we got her in the shop and uh, I'll go through my, uh, my troubleshooting that we did on this thing here. So first thing we did, we took the cowlings off, took all the spark plug leads off, and then I turned it over by hand just to check and see if, to make sure that it has compression. Uh, four cylinder engines are really easy to tell if there's something wrong just by turning it over by hand. Six cylinders a little harder because there's two cylinders coming up on compression at the same time. So that's just, uh, you know, I, I do that every time. So the next thing I did, I, I took the exhaust gas temperature probe out of number four cylinder and I heated, uh, heated it up with the uh, switches turned on and watched the temperature rise and it showed me that number four is connected correctly. There's no sense doing a whole bunch of troubleshooting if you don't know what cylinder. I didn't install the system, the exhaust gas temperature, it's a JPI. Uh, so I always confirm that. Then the next thing I did, I, uh, I did a quick valve clearance check. Uh, there's a little video that I posted uh, on like homing engines on how to uh, check the, the valve clearance. Uh, basically what you do is you rotate the engine so that the, the valve spring is putting tension against the lifter and it deflates it. And you hold the push rod in towards the engine as you bring it back up the to top head center and you can get a feeler gauge in there. Or you can just visually have a look at it and make sure that it has an adequate clearance. So after that, I did a normal compression test just to uh, confirm that my swinging it over by hand was accurate. Uh, I did a little video and I used this airplane. So that's posted as well. If you're interested in how I do a compression test, I do it in accordance with AC 4313. So after I did that, then I... Uh, I did a, a valve inspection. There's a service bulletin that Lycoming recommends you do. I think it's 388. Uh, they uh, give you all this information about using a, a test fixture. I have one. And you use a dial gauge, you rock it back and forth and all that. I find it easier to just take the keepers off and feel the valve. And if there is a problem, you can address it by just knocking the valve into the uh, cylinder and... Uh, reaming it and then putting the valve back in. I use a magnet and a little piece of wire. I've had good success pulling the uh, valve back into the valve guide, no problem. I've been doing it that way for years. Uh, if you look at the video, you'll see I have a tool that I made that pushes the valves down to uh, make it a lot easier to get the rocker shafts out because the hydraulic lifts, are, they're holding tension against that as well. So we're gonna swap number four and number two probe for the exhaust gas temperature gauge and then we're going to dispatch the airplane and get a report from the the owner uh if the uh if number four fails again we'll know it's the gauge or some wiring and if uh, number two fails we'll just change the probe and that'll fix it up so the only other thing i did was i uh i drained the carburetor down in there there's a plug at the back of the carburetor and uh, you'd be surprised what you find in there this one didn't have anything but I had a guy with a Cessna 175 that used to pour outboard motor oil in every time he got fuel he'd dump an ounce or something in his and he thought he was doing a great thing lubricating his intake valves and lubricating this and that well one day it wouldn't start so after a bit of investigation I found the carburetor completely full of outboard motor oil. So you never know what you're gonna find in there. So if, uh, if the owner, if this doesn't uh, resolve the problem or if we find some other issues after, I'll post another video on this, but I think I'm pretty confident that, that we're not gonna find anything else wrong. So as my dad said to me years ago, he always used to say to watch Everybody, watch everybody, watch what they're doing. You'll, uh, it may come in handy someday. 
So cheers, everyone.